Random love reading. This is for you if you are in relationship, situationship, you don't know what kind of ship you're in, you're like, what is this? Can't describe it to anybody, weird connection, 5D, twin flame, we're doing it all. Okay, whenever you hear this is the right time for you, it's a timeless message. I'm gonna take three cards actually for the overall energy of what's going on with you at the moment. Any star sign, okay, this is for you. Ooh, okay, nice. Some of you are very stressed about hearing from somebody. It's not you. Oh, very nice, okay. First card we get is the Knight of Cups. Love this card, everybody loves this card, obviously, because, you know, in a love reading, the Knight of Cups is bringing the goods. They're bringing the bejeweled cup with them, hurrah. And they're coming forward and they've got a horse, and they brush their hair. Do you know what I mean? They did a bit of a tss -tss in the pants before they went out. We like it. So Knight of Cups is an encouraging sign, or it should be, okay? It's associated with the water signs of Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio. But more importantly, it's like a one-up from the Page of Cups. Page of Cups, the initial text, how are you doing, are you up, I miss you, that kind of jazz. Knight of Cups, you know, they've managed to string it together into a couple more sentences, maybe they actually rang. It's that energy where you step something up. It can be somebody new coming into the picture as well, no matter what you're in. And what I'm getting channeled to me is whatever shipwreck you're in at the moment. Let me know in the comment section, hit the like button if that, that resonated with you because it's not my thought, you know? It's like I can literally see a shipwreck with somebody stumbling out, stumbling out of it going, oh, what happened? It looks like a sort of zombie. Now, next to the Knight of Cups, we've got the Nine of Swords. And as you can see from the Nine of Swords, this is a card of worry. It's a card of overthinking, it's a card of strategizing, and if only I did this, would that have happened? If I'd have done that, would this have happened? Why haven't I heard from this person? What's going on with this person? What's going on with me? <laughs> Four o'clock in the morning, you're still awake with this kind of stuff. Now, you don't need me to tell you this is not helpful. You already know because you're doing it, and I'm sure if you could stop it, you would have stopped it by now. But it's just for you to know, when you get the Nine of Swords with the Knight of Cups, you know that you're dealing with stressing about hearing from somebody, literally. What are you stressing about? About the Knight of Cups. Stressing, will they come forward? Will they step up? Where are they? What's going on? All these sorts of thoughts. Then we have Temperance just when we need it. Can you see how you've got one orangey red jug and one blue? You've got fire and water, yin and yang, masculine and feminine. These are two contrasting forces. Whatever you do and whatever happens in your love situation, you are going to be dealing with these contrasting forces for quite some time. And if you can find a way to hold these two forces of energy without wanting or favouring one more than the other, that will be the key to you moving forward, which is what you want to do, which is what we want to do in this reading. What do we want to do in this reading? We want to find out what's going to happen, we want to know the best way forward, and we want to avoid the pitfalls, okay? That's what we're doing. So those are your three overall energy cards, not too shabby. Okay. If this really resonates with you and it is your story, we will do an extended reading as we do every time. In the extended, we'll take all the cards that came up here and if it's your story, we will then channel messages from your person. We will look at the shadow side. We will get freaky, crack open some new decks. 
crack open some old decks and just do some more weird channely stuff. Gets a bit all a bit 5D in the extended. That will be the first link in the description box if you're up for that. Okay, what do we need to know, please? What do we need to know? Literally, I'm just asking the question to the universe. What do we need to know right now? Wowzers. I know, who says wowzers these days? Four of wands. Well, that's nice. So the four of wands is divinely inspired relationship. It is the twin flame card. It is the 1111 card. Very nice energy when you get the four. It's one of my favorite cards. It's sometimes difficult to read because there's nothing complex or difficult in there. Somehow the more difficult cards, the sort of, you're not gonna call them bad cards because there aren't, but the ones with like the nine of swords, they're very clear what they are. The four of wands is more of a joyous card. You're reaching some kind of celebration. It's not all the way celebration, but it's a point at which you can say, we made it this far. Now the four of wands spiritually as well, and this is why you nearly always see some kind of window or gateway. It is a spiritual gateway card. There is the energy of stepping through and you can see these two like doves in the background. So you can see that there. And you get two people really chiming with each other but it's very 11-11, it's very kind of 5D. It's very joyous, but in another universe. And why can't I touch it? Why is it far away? Why does it feel weird? Why do I feel like this? Why are we telepathic? All of that is, I can feel it chaotically milling around this reading. And that's my chaotically milling around mine, chaotically milling around your head. Okay, now what comes up with the Four of Wands? Love this card. The moon. I know. Okay, so when you get this, there's a few things. Four of Wands and the moon is, the moon itself, subliminal card. Everything is subconscious. It's submerged. It's not hiding, but it's below the surface. This card is below the surface. It's very, very yin energy with the Four of Wands. It feels like that if, right, okay, that this relationship that you're asking about, the reason why you're here today is underwater. It's under the surface. And yes, that feels weird. Of course that feels weird, why wouldn't it? And you can breathe under that water. Now that's also weird, but I bet you've had dreams about this or water has come into it. Look, intemperance wading through this water. In the Knight of Cups, get it going through water to get to you. And in the moon, ice. There have been and are, and maybe will be in the near future, times when this relationship is preserved in ice. Hit the like button if you got that. I need to know. Or tell me in the comments section. Because for me, there's channeling and there's channeling. Sometimes it's bingo like that, and that is bingo for me. Absolute bingo. Sometimes this relationship is preserved in ice. I am going to write it down. Otherwise I'll forget that I said it. I do this sometimes because it's important and it will come up in the extended and I won't remember if I don't write it down. I've written it down. Okay. There is somewhat of a mystery to crack about this person. There is somewhat of a mystery to solve. 
there is a sense, and this has been coming up in the love readings for quite some time, for a few months. Do you remember there was a love reading back along where somebody was behind glass? Well, now it's ice and it feels well preserved. It's in good hands and it's a very clean element, but at the same time, you want it to be warm. This is the only, if we look at these cards now, hi Leia, oh look at that, Leia's having a stretch. Go on sweetheart, turn it around, good girl. That's the exercise done for the day. Look at the colour of these cards. Can you see it? Everything's blue. It's all kind of bluish. It's all watery, icy, blue, that kind of thing. Then we got this gorgeous four of wands emanating all this warmth and orange and green even where it's like things are growing. It's spring. Let's go. You know, this person's holding on to a spring like plant. You are in the ice age in this relationship. It's the ice age, okay? We're looking for the grand thaw. I don't know, was there a grand thaw? Is that even a good thing? Who knows? Okay. I'm just gonna take one more card to go with the, well, no, we don't need it actually, hang on. What do we need to know next? What's standing in the way? Let's have a look at this. What's standing in the way or who is standing in the way of success, of warmth? Oof. Ten of Swords. When you get the Ten of Swords as who or what is standing in the way, it's, in some way it's a good card because we had the Nine of Swords. And when you get the Nine of Swords, it's so painful to be in that place because you haven't reached the point where it's too painful to stay the same and you actually envisage changing something. When you get to the Ten, it's more of a completion. It's that whole, if you really wanted to hurt me, you should have got to me sooner. It's the whole feeling of, I can't go on with this. I want things to be different. I'm imagining this change or that change happening. That's your Ten of Swords energy. There is going to be definitely some difficult times in this connection. We can't avoid that and I'm not going to glitter it, there's no point. So there's going to be difficult times in this connection, but what's coming up here is a feeling of, instead of being on hold and on ice and in a sense frozen so that nothing is really developing but nothing is going, it's just like here, like a perfectly held thing. Ten of Swords is transformed by the pain of it. Transformative pain points, or what Eckhart Tolle might call the pain body. We actually get to the point, thank God, where you almost have to destroy it to love it again. I know this is turning out to be quite a weird reading, but it's really, really, I'm just going to blow my own trumpet here. It's really accurate. I'm feeling it. Okay, I'm feeling it. Ten of Swords is when you become too much in pain to stay the same and the whole situation is bursting for a change. The moon, again, will play quite a big part in this. So I would say that this feeling because we got the full moon right before it, is going to come around the time of a full moon. So look up when your next full moon is. What should we do? Okay. I 
I knew that that guy was going to come into our reading. <laughs> okay. So, what should we do? We are getting, just shove everything up a bit, the Four of Swords here. And then our old friend, King of Swords, the Cancerians will recognise this guy. He's always barging his way into your readings, isn't he? Um, Four of Swords and the King of Swords. Four of Swords, again, is a card of warmth and it's a card of peace. And it's a card of not actually doing an awful lot. You don't need to be getting red in the face. You don't need to be running ragged about or chasing somebody or staying up all night worrying about it or any of those things. In the short term, now, as you're listening to this reading, you do nothing. And that might make you feel incredibly unsatisfied. Like, I want to do something. I want to make this happen. You need to get to that pain point before something shifts. And in a way, you should be happier to see the Ten of Swords than the Knight of Cups. Because you are in something that is so wound up and tightly strung, it needs to loosen off. And then we have the King of Swords. Now, normally, if this was a what to do card, it would be, you know, we've got the King of Swords, you need to rule with an, with an iron fist almost. You need to put everything to the sword of truth and have good boundaries. I think this is the person that you're dealing with. Male or female, I think this is the person that you're dealing with. Because the King of Swords themselves, and it is the case in this one, apart from the gold, is always icy coloured because the King of Swords is always an icy type person. I mean, they're not actually. Underneath, there is a beating heart <laughs> under all that armour. Under all this armour. Okay, there is a beating heart. I'm going to write that down. And armour is almost like amour, isn't it? And I reckon you've had glimpses of it. And you want more than a glimpse. You want to be let in. So the Four of Swords is the direction you take, which is the direction of no effort. And when I say that, it doesn't mean you do nothing forever. It just means initially unwind yourself, unwind your res responses, your reactions, what's keeping you up in the middle of the night. Sometimes this is difficult. If it's difficult, just move to an emotional neutral where you can at least think nothing. You just think, I'm not drawing any conclusions and I'm going to think about something else. Because you need to provide the oxygen. There's a situation here where a relationship ran out of oxygen, it's iced, it's under the surface. Ooh, two cards just dropped out on their own. Love this deck. So we've got the Page of Pentacles. And the nine, yes. Okay, double confirmation here from the tarot. Page of Pentacles, or Page of Wheels as it's called in this one, comes out when you need to know about the season. Now you're in winter. You're in winter, things don't grow in the winter. They're not supposed to. Things are supposed to get like this, they get icy. And this in itself means it will grow better when it's spring and summer. It needs to die back. 
something needs to die back. I can't get over the amount of times that gardening metaphors come into my readings and I am no gardener. Anyhow, pages, especially the page of pentacles, is about patience. It's about being at the beginning of something. No matter how long you've known this person, you're back at the beginning again. And you're, in a sense, looking for a blank page. You're looking to rewrite this story. And then next to it, the Nine of Pentacles. And she's got a hen, that's quite cool. So this is Venus in Virgo, the Nine of Pentacles. It's you absolutely, you're warming the place up by loving yourself. You're lighting a fire about yourself. You're not trying to blow it in the other person's direction. You don't need to. Now, you need to be the beacon, the thing, the flame that's glowing. This in itself will thaw the ice. It's fire and it's ice. I'm loving this. Woof. I am loving this. Okay. I hope you're loving this too. Do let me know. I would be. And I am. Okay. The path forward, please, with this person. Yes. It's a very interesting Eight of Wands. No, I'm finding it really hard to find another one. Hang on. That is so interesting. Okay. The path forwards. First of all, we have the Eight of Wands. And there's kind of stormy weather here. It's not sunny, it's not icy, it's kind of a storm. We need a bit of a storm. Eight of Wands is communication, it's the communication card. Love this energy. There is a communication with this person moving forwards. It's jaggedy, it's up and down, and it's not as smooth as you would like it to be. It's not as warm in the beginning as you would like it to be either. You need to ignore that kind of temperamental weather that is around this situation. We get the Queen of Swords for how to move forward. Queen of Swords meeting the King of Swords. Now this is very interesting and I'm not talking about pretending because pretending is a sign of weakness really in a relationship. The Queen of Swords matching the King of Swords. Her boundaries are tight. She has a list of non-negotiables rehearsed in her own head. She knows what she's about. She knows her limits and she knows her understanding. And there is something about this that gives the King of Swords the freedom to speak. Gosh. In the extended, I am going to look at the King and Queen of Swords. I'm going to look at what they have to say. I'm going to channel messages about times and places and the shadow side. Outcome card, oh my God. 
Wow. The tower as your outcome card. Woohoo! I'll take a love oracle as well. And we get the seven of cups. Let me switch that off. Tower, this is just what you need. It's not often I say that about the tower. Normally with the tower, we're like, oh no, it's the tower. Ugh. This is the fire that is needed. If you get to a certain point with it, the universe will provide the rest. If you light your beacon, this is what the universe will do. It's like, yes, they've got the element. They know what to do. They're lit and here it comes. And it will destroy anything false, which is needed. You need to destroy anything that's false. Let's have a love oracle card. I love this. Okay. Compatibility. And this is the challenge in the 3D about compatibility on both levels, on the level of the four of ones and on the level of the everyday. And that is your next challenge. Woof. I'm going to go do the extended. That's the first link in the description box. Oh, I liked this reading. Leave me a comment. I'll see you on the other side. Namaste.